Morning everybody, this is Adam. Hi, I'm Anna. Hey, we're going to talk about how God gives us the ability, the things that he does in our lives to give us the ability to obey him. And uh, a lot of times when we're thinking of obedience, we, th we think that we are left to ourselves. God says something and he goes, go do it. And if you screw up, I'm going to get you. No, that's not what God does. He actually oh, t commands us to obey him. And then he come along, comes alongside of and works in us so that we can obey him. And it's interesting. We were reading today, Anna and I were reading together and we came across Psalm 105. The Lord led us to that. And he gave us six different things, and Anna's going to read from her version of the Bible, each one of those, and I'll explain them. But there's six different things that God does to maintain obedience in our lives, that he does, so that in order that, we can obey him. That's a little bit of a different um, subject, but it's something that I think everybody needs to actually hear, Right. Yeah. And I think that there that um, it's very important to <laughs> just laughing. It's so important for us to realize that when God says to do something, he's going to give us the ability to do it. He's not going to leave us to ourselves. So Anna's going to read the first the the uh, your homework is Psalm 105 by the way. Read Psalm 105, but we're going to begin in verse 37 and go down to uh, verse 44. <laughs> But uh, she's going to re read the first verse, and then we'll explain it. So Psalm 37. Okay, here's or, Psalm 37, or 105, 37 out of the NLT. The Lord brought his people out of Egypt, loaded with silver and gold, and not one among the tribes of Israel even stumbled. I think that what he's actually saying there is salvation and gifts. God gives us salvation to obey him, and then he gives us the gifts of the Holy Spirit to obey him. And that's the representation of that. He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none, none feeble, which my version says, among his tribes. So he gives us salvation first, and then the gifts of the Holy Spirit to obey him. What's the next one? Egypt was glad when they were gone, for they feared them greatly. The next thing I think after salvation and gifts is a witness. Sometimes our witness is uh, to the world to say, okay, Look at the power of God in that person's life. Look at the what God can do with that person. And so that's a witness here. Egypt all of a sudden saw the kind of people that God uh, was working through and the kind of people that were obeying God in this situation. So the second thing is, in verse 38, is that God gives us a witness, ability to be a witness to him. Okay. Verse 39. Uh, 39. The Lord spread a cloud above them as a covering and gave them a great fire to light the darkness. The third thing, I think, that is that he gives us direction. First thing is salvation and gifts. The second thing is witness. And, and, and the third thing is he gave, gives us, like he did the children of Israel, direction. All these things are important to obey him. We cannot obey God unless we are saved and given the ability to walk in that salvation. We cannot obey God unless we are a witness. And he gives us that ability to be a witness or an example to others. We cannot obey God unless he gives us direction. And so here, as he did with the nation of Israel, he gives us as believers direction. Verse 40. Okay, they asked for meat and he sent them quail. He satisfied their hunger with manna, bread from heaven. He split open a rock and water gushed out to form a river through the dry wasteland. Okay, so here in both situations, it was provision. The people asked and he brought quail and satisfied them, as she said. And the rock opened up and waters gushed out and ran out like a dry, like a dry places, like a river, my version says. So we have salvation and gifts. We have a witness to obey God. We have direction from God to obey him. And then he provides for us. The Bible says, says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So God knows that he needs to provide for us in order for us to obey him. God knows that we need his direction to obey him. God knows that we need him to enable us to be the example to obey him. And God most importantly knows that we need his salvation and ability to walk in that salvation to obey him. What's the next one? Okay, so 42. 
for he remembered his sacred promise to his servant Abraham. So he brought his people out of Egypt with joy, his chosen ones with rejoicing. The biggest, the, one of the biggest things about uh, enabling us to obey him is that God enjoys giving us these abilities to obey him. Just like it said here, he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant and brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. So God is doing this. He's commanding us and giving us the ability to obey him because it brings joy and it pleases God to give us the ability to obey him, right? Right. Verse 44. <laughs> he gave his people the land of pagan nations and they harvested crops that others had planted. The next thing is destination. God gives us a, a purpose or a destination in life. The salvation and gifts come and then a witness, a direction, a provision, a, a, a joy to do these things for us and then a destination to obey him. God is not, is it, God's wanting you to know, he's wanting us to know that he doesn't leave us alone to figure out, like I said at the beginning of this uh, Bible study, to figure it out ourselves when it comes to obeying him. Because the last verse says that they might observe the statues and keep his laws. Praise the Lord. He did all of these things, the Bible says in verse 45, Psalm 105, 45, that they might observe his statues and keep his laws. So that's what God's doing with you. He's never leaving you alone to figure out his commandments for your life. He proclaims the commandments through his word, and then he says, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to give you salvation because you can't do it without my salvation. I'm going to give you my gifts so that you can walk in that salvation. I'm going to give you my witness and my direction and my provision. And I'm going to tell you how happy it is for me to do so. And then I'm going to give you a destination. And that kind of destination is, is that you don't have to start from scratch when you obey God. When you're actually obeying God and you're walking with him, things are already set up. There's already things that are taking place. There's already gas in the tank. There's already, um, you know, a house that's built, a crop that's sown, a well that's dug in the person's life. And these are all things so that we maintain a life of obedience in him. Isn't that exciting? Very exciting. Is there anything else? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to share that with you guys today. God bless you. And we hope you have a great day. Have a good day.